Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at setting strong encrypted passwords. And though it goes without saying, this is going to be on Cisco devices. There are a number of different features in Cisco iOS that either require the use of a password, the classic example in that case is the enable password, or that allow you to use passwords to increase the security for that function. Uh, one that pops up is like BGP neighbor passwords. And by default, those passwords are stored, obviously, in your configuration, running and startup. But the interesting thing is that by default, they are stored as clear text. So if you specify a password, enable passwords, I hate servers, then that's going to show up in your running configuration in clear text. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, that's fine, because the only people that are going to see my running configuration are myself and anybody that I have deemed worthy of privilege level 15 that could do a show run and see the configuration. The first problem with that is that your configurations aren't always solely stored on your devices. You may have a network share where you save out um, old configurations or the most recent configuration, or you might have a network management software package that goes out and pulls those for you and keeps them in a database or repository. So at that point, anybody that has access to like say that, sh that share drive or to that um, software is able to see your running configurations and by default see all your passwords in clear text. The second problem that can crop up is that you may have to give temporary access to your devices to another user. Now that can be an internal user, which could be your NOC, or it could be an external user, it could be a consultant uh, that's helping you, or it could be Cisco TAC. And you can use one-time passwords, I have a lesson on that, check it out to allow this type of access. The problem is, is that with your passwords stored in your running configuration in clear text, if they get in with their temporary password of, you know, whatever, XYZ, and they get into the running configuration, they can see your enable password. They can see your local username database passwords. And so even when they log out and that one-time password is no longer valid, they still have the ability to peep your enable passwords and they may put that to devious use later on. And the third problem is the quote unquote over the shoulder password attack. Calling this an attack is kind of a misnomer. What it is is that you're sitting at your desk working on an issue and a server guy comes by and says, oh, the network's screwed, it's messing up my server. And you're like, oh God, so you start troubleshooting and you're going through your running configuration to check some settings and he's standing over your shoulder because passwords are stored in clear text by default, if you're going through the running configuration, you can say, oh look, the enable password is I hate servers. I will keep that in mind and put that to devious use later. So what you want to prevent situations like this is you want the ability to encrypt these passwords in the running configuration so that, you know, specifically the over the shoulder attack is ineffective. And luckily for us, Cisco iOS has a method for doing that, and that is the Service Password Encryption Global Configuration Command. And basically what that command is going to do is it's going to take all of your clear text passwords and it's going to encrypt them so to prevent over-the-shoulder attacks and stuff like this. And this helps you keep true to the security mantra of only share as much information about your systems as is needed. All right, and this slide just shows some of the more common passwords that you're going to use on Cisco devices. So you've got your console VTY and auxiliary passwords, uh, your enable password, that's a biggie. Enable secret, that's a little bit of a different beast, and we'll touch on that again later. And then your local username database, whereas you provide a username and then a password for that username to access your local device. As you can see here, all of these are stored by default in clear text. And this shows you a couple other passwords that I mentioned here. There's a ton of these. There are, and these are ones that you might not think of when you're thinking of passwords. Your OSPF authentication key, you see here that's stored in clear text. A BGP neighbor password, you probably would think of that because it has the word password in the command. And then key change, which are used for a ton of different authentication methods. Uh, the key string is actually stored in clear text by default. And for this lesson, it's not important that you know what these do, just that the passwords for these are by default stored in clear text in your configuration. And this slide is just hammering home the fact that these passwords are stored in your configuration in clear text. Again, I mentioned that the uh, secret passwords are an exception, and we're going to see that a little bit later. So you can see that if somebody had access to your configuration, they could easily just read off the enable password. Um, they can see your key change, your authentication keys, blah, blah, blah. So here's our hero, the service password encryption command. And this command is a global configuration command that is important for two reasons. Uh, one, you need to be in global configuration mode to configure it. 
duh. The second reason is that it's going to affect all the passwords on your box. You can't really say, okay, I want to encrypt this password but not that one, this one but not that one. You can do that. There's kind of a hack with that. I'll explain that later. But generally if you're doing this, you're going to take any unencrypted passwords on your box and encrypt them. You can go ahead and read the usage guideline. We kind of went over this already. This bit right here. This command is primarily useful for keeping unauthorized individuals from viewing your password in your configuration file. That's referring specifically to the over-the-shoulder attack. When password encryption is enabled, the encrypted form of the passwords is R uh, displayed when a blah blah blah. This command is basically just another way to do a show running configuration command. Uh, Cisco rolled this out. Well, it's always been there, but they've been trying to push this uh, as a replacement for the show running configuration. It's not taking off, and I don't think it ever will. So don't get thrown off by this. This is just basically your show run command. So the information on this slide is taken directly from the command reference guide out on cisco.com for this command. And so this caution here says, this command does not provide a high level of network security. If you use this command, you should also take additional network security measures, and that is true. The algorithm that it uses to encrypt the passwords is easily broken, and we'll see that in just a bit here. It foils the over-the-shoulder attack, and it's pretty good. You know, the, the issues that I talked about earlier, it will foil those most for the most part. But do know that this is not the Fort Knox of password protection in that the algorithm that is used can be easily broken, and we'll see that, like I said, in just a bit. And this note here. Uh, you cannot recover a lost encrypted password. You must clear NVRAM and set a new password. Again, technically correct, except that if you're using a Type 7 password, which we'll get to in a bit, you can easily break this. What this is talking about is if you're doing a, a password recovery. Obviously, if you do a password recovery and you recover the running configuration and the passwords are encrypted, you're going to have to decrypt them to know what they are. And a type 7 is easily decrypted, a type 5 is not. So this is technically accurate, but there are ways around this. So this slide shows a comparison of configuration before and after applying the service password encryption command. Before, you can see everything's in clear text, pretty easy to read. My enable password is Packet Lab. If somebody was over my shoulder, it wouldn't be that hard for them to go, hmm, enable password is Packet Lab. After configuring the service password encryption, command you can see there's a few changes in this configuration so we can just go for line for line here with this enable password packet lab becomes enable password oh, so far so good seven what is this well that's designating as a type 7 password we have some slides on that that are coming up shortly and then after that there is a string of hexadecimal characters well that string of hex characters is actually packet lab that's what it's been encrypted to so you can see that this significantly increases the difficulty of an over-the-shoulder attack whereas I could walk by and be like oh enable password packet lab pretty easy to remember I don't know about you and I'm sure there are some brainiacs out here who can commit this type of you know hex string to memory rather quickly I'm not one of them if I walk by and say oh enable password I wouldn't even know what the seven is but then I'd be like Ooh, 053B272 C A Z blah blah blah. I wouldn't be able to remember this. And as you could see, once we issued this command, it didn't just encrypt specific passwords, it encrypted all of them. And you can see here, you know, the keychain was encrypted, the BGP password was encrypted, all the different line passwords were encrypted. So it's pretty cool, but it's an all or nothing deal. So we just saw that service password encryption throws on that 7 on the password. So what does that mean? Well, there's actually three different numbers with this. There's 0, 5, and 7. And each of them refers to a type of password. So if you see password and then followed by zero, that means that that password is unencrypted, basically clear text. And you'll occasionally see this when service password encryption is not enabled. Like here, this was before we hit enabled service password encryption. You can see that the enabled password is in clear text, but doesn't have a zero there. The username password has a zero after it, which means it's in clear text. So it's not always gonna show up on here um, when you don't have service password encryption enabled, but it's nice to know that that's what that means.